Well, thank God there's a bishop in the house. I said there's a bishop in the house. Hallelujah. Well, for, the, for a couple of Sundays, um, I think for about six months, we haven't seen him, um, you know, but um, we're happy to have him back. Well, two weeks feels like six months, isn't it? When the father's not at home, we realize that one day is like um, three weeks. But we thank God that God has taken him and brought him back. And this morning, I believe that God is going to come through to us and uh, into our hearts by his word. I want us to stand together to our feet and welcome the bishop of the house. There's a wind a blowing. All across the land, it's a fragrant breeze. It's blowing once again, once again. I don't know where it comes from, don't know where it comes from. Don't, but let it blow, but let it blow over me. for your mercies, your grace, and your help as we come before your holy word. Lord, we know we can do nothing without you and apart from you. We pray for mercy, for help. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. How many believe that Jesus is here today? Jesus said, where, where two of you gather in my name, I will be there. Amen. Well, I'm glad to be back. I bring you greetings from uh, London, where I was for, I was invited by the church to minister. And uh, please tell them, a church to minister, and then also in Switzerland for our Swiss shepherd's camp. And uh, I'm back. Amen. Everybody is doing well. The churches are growing, expanding. Um, the work of the Lord is going on. Amen. We thank the Lord. Turn with me, please, to Daniel chapter 6. Uh, well, let's first look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter number 4. And uh, we're going to read verse number 6, 7, and 8. All right? Uh, verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained, but refuse old wives' fables, and exercise. Everybody say exercise. exercise. Say exercise. exercise. All right. Uh, thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Amen. Amen. Today I want to uh, share with you, um, or begin to share with you about um, the word godliness. Amen. Amen. And that word is the Greek word Eusebio. You heard the name Eusebius, but I, I don't know whether it comes from this word, but Eusebio, E-E-U-S-E-B-E-O. -E -E Eusebio. All right? It means, it is the word that is translated. You know, the Bible was written in Greek. And then it was translated into other languages. So, uh, the, whenever you translate um, a document, you sometimes lose a bit of the meaning of the words. All right? Um, 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 um. So, when you translate sometimes a language, you, a, a document, you sometimes lose some of the meanings of the words. So, that's why we often go to Greek words like anakazo. 
Anadea, Phanerosis, and what else? Biazo, and what else? Dia and Sakal, Aman and Chalak, Alos. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, uh, it, is, it is a good thing sometimes to just go back a bit and you sometimes find a surprise uh, when you find out the meaning of a certain word. Amen. So, Eusebio, it means to be pious toward God, to worship God. It also means to reverence God and it signifies sacred awe and describes reverence exhibited in actions. Well, maybe it's even worse now. You may not understand it. But all it means is to be religious. Amen. Amen. To be pious. To, be, to have reverence. To show reverence in your action. Godliness. God-fearing behavior in your actions. Amen. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, the Bible says, Godly, Bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Amen. So, bodily exercise does have very little effect on this life, but I believe that it has, there is a greater effect, a uh, better effect when you are godly or you practice Eusebio. Tell somebody Eusebio. Godliness. Amen. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to Open your word to us and to speak to our hearts and to reveal to us the truth of your word. And let us never be the same again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, notice verse 8. It says, bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Amen. Amen. What the Bible is saying is that exercise or bodily, physical activities profit little they don't profit much they profit but not so much amen, amen. they are they are useful but not so much as much as we would think they would be all right and so god is saying that we must rather turn our eyes to something that will have longer lasting effects how many want to do something that's more useful you know, supposing you are doing, you are learning for an exam, and then you, uh, you are learning, uh, uh, let's say you're doing physics, you are light, we have nuclear, uh, uh, chapter on nuclear something, and then also on light, and then on um, heat, light, and what, sound, mechanics, music. Reverend Saki, there's no music in physics, please. <laughs> So, supposing you are learning heat and light, and they tell you that heat and light are not coming in the exam. The teacher said, we are not having an exam on heat and light. We're going to have heat and light. We're going to have an exam on sound and mechanical physics, forces, Newton's laws. It would be better to stop learning the heat and light and go to the sound and then the mechanics, isn't it? Because that's going to profit you more. And when the exam time comes and they ask you questions about things you don't know, you get it, then you're going to have all sorts of problems. So God is trying to show us what is useful. Tell somebody, God is trying to show you what is useful. God is trying to show us what we should prepare for. Amen. He's trying to tell us what is going to benefit us greatly. Now he says, bodily exercise profiteth little. Now bodily exercise means all the physical things that we do to make our body, our bodies and our physical lives better. Now, what are the parts of your body? You have your muscles and so on. We all know the things that we do to exercise our bodies like uh, karate, 
and um, judo and uh, what are the other going to the gym is that not so keep you alive keep you going running and so on it is useful it is useful in Africa we often die people die here earlier because this not especially if you become a prosperous person you don't have much activity uh, and uh, there are certain sports that are useful for people as you grow older and so on and uh, people don't do those things because they have a mind that oh, these are for elite people or these are for that and so on and they have all sorts of ideas in their minds but um, it's still of some use anyway and but it's not very useful in the long term it's useful but not so much and godliness is more useful more spiritual more more profitable now let's take bodily exercise i mean i remember when i was in school those who were doing short pulls and javelin and all these things i don't know where they are today i don't i mean at the end of the day that did not matter how many have noticed those who won 100 meters and 200 meters in school i mean they may not necessarily be any great people in life today is that not so who are those who who did well in life those who did well in their exams not just those who did well in um, in sports thank god for sports but there's more to life than sports there's more to school than sports but when you are doing the sports they will hail you they'll give you fans they'll give you names they'll call you all sorts of names and give you fans and you really feel you have achieved in life and when the exam come the head may be empty and you'll be writing nothing and at the end of the day you've got o level uh, grade 14 no grade 3 or grade 2 and then you can't go to sixth form and then you can't go to the university then before you realize you are looking for a security job so ladies and gentlemen God wants to take us and shift our attention to important things if you are spiritual you see I'm talking about being spiritual if you are godly godly and spiritual it will help you it will help you in this life it says for godliness is profitable unto all things Amen. having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come that means when you are godly and spiritual and religious it will help you in this life having promise of the life that now is and then of that which is to come is one of the most useful things to do and to be is to be religious and to be spiritual and to be godly and to have Eusebio as the Bible says to you be to be Eusebio to have to have a godly God-fearing spiritual pious outlook to life it's a good thing I said it's a good thing you and you tend to laugh at such people they look out of fashion and out of trend but in the long run they are better off I said in the long run they are better off you see those young girls who look so trendy and are going all over the place and they seem to have uh, the, the school prefect is their boyfriend and the hundred meters winner is their boyfriend and they have exter you know on campus they call exter that means that somebody who comes from external sources he comes from outside they have an exter or you have an inter which is an internal person or you have an understanding they have something they call understanding that is you have your girlfriend somewhere and he has his boyfriend somewhere so there's an understanding between the two of you whose boyfriends and girlfriends are away so we have an understanding we have an inter we have an exter i don't enjoy such things tell somebody i don't enjoy such things if you have an understanding you you can easily have an understanding later in life <laughs> So, brothers and sisters, uh, these things may look great and they may look fashionable. 
They may look nice today, but it will not help you much in life. But you take a religious person, you take a spiritual person who doesn't like such things, who doesn't go to discos, who doesn't go for such parties, who doesn't have short dresses that are almost upstairs. You take a religious person, a spiritual person, who doesn't have all these boyfriends and all these girlfriends. You take a spiritual person, somebody who is pious. You see Bill, he's religious, he's spiritual. You watch his life. I say you watch his life. When they start diagnosing HIV all around, Ghana hasn't yet reached there. But it's going to get there at a point. If, unless they stop the trend. But we haven't reached West South Africa and those Southern African countries have got into. But in those countries, many people, many people just are dead and are dying in the congregation. They are all over. They are in the churches. They are in the schools. They are in the banks. Workplaces are emptying out. People die all the time. It hasn't yet got to here. Maybe we have less of sex than they do. I don't know, but... What do you think? <laughs> but when those things begin to hit, the religious people will be exempted because the spiritual, religious, pious people, they wouldn't have all these things. Yeah, you wouldn't have all that. Because you don't have that life. You are not a married person with girlfriends. A married man with girlfriends on the side. You are not a married woman with an understanding. <laughs> you are not a student with an exte Or an inte. <laughs> it's a pity. <laughs> but you are spiritual. I say you are spiritual. You are spiritual. When you are spiritual, you will not steal. So when they start the fast tracks, you will not begin to shiver. And your piousness and your religiosity and your spirituality will now begin to benefit you, even in this life. Not if, before we even get to heaven. Your religious life and your spiritual life will help you to get a good person to marry. It's true. Because when you are not religious and when you are not spiritual, you see, when I say exercise yourself unto godliness, the exercise is repeated activity. Exercise just means repeated activity like this. That's exercise. Repeated activity. That's exercise. That's what we mean by exercise. So when we say exercise yourself unto godliness, it's repeated religious and spiritual activities. That's, what, that's how you exercise yourself. You do repeated activities that make you more religious and more spiritual. And God wants you to be more religious and more spiritual. And when you are more religious and more spiritual, you are likely to get a better person to marry. Because your entertainment will be in the church. Your friends will be in there. Those of you who come to church, and after church you just go out, you just walk out. I'm off. You are lucky I came today. And I'm not going to come until August. I'll come in September, in September. Next week I'm washing. Next week I'm doing something else. And you have time for, listen, as you grow more and more religious and spiritual, your friends will be in the church. In fact, your social life, you, some of you said, nobody has, pro nobody has, uh, uh, nobody has proposed to me before. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know who is talking. 
Yeah, the reason why nobody has proposed to you before is because you are not very religious. <laughs> you, know, you are not Eusebio. You, you, you hardly come around there. The spirituality on you is very small. So the, the people that you know are more the people in your office. Because in your office, you are there for a long time. And the people that are in your office are also some way. And they are also, they, some of them don't marry and they don't want to marry. Or some of them have wives and husbands, but they want to play around to have an understanding with you in the office. <laughs> I don't enjoy such things. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yeah. yeah. And you have an understanding. No, but when you are more religious, more spirit, where, where do you think you'll get a beloved from? Where do you think? Oh, yeah. Because you are around. I mean, when people are looking for beloveds and so on, they start to look, you look where you see. God hasn't given you vision to see more than 10 miles. You just see a few yards around you. So you look for more religious people around you. More spiritual people. And then when you are married, being religious will help you to be happy in your marriage. Because if you are not religious and spiritual, repeated activities, in spiritual things, you will never know the truth about marriage. And you will be very prone to be either divorced in reality or divorced in facto, de facto divorce. In actual fact, you are divorced. You live together, but you are separated. You live together, but you are separated in your heart or you are separated in your rooms. Husband is here, wife is here. In my house, we sleep in the same room. And in the same bed. I've always slept in the same bed with my wife. And I intend to continue sleeping in the same bed with my wife. Even if I'm not happy or she's not happy, we all end up coming. We are, we are sleeping in the same bed together. And when I stretch my hand, it must be my wife. <laughs> Do you enjoy what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And as you become as you become more religious and more spiritual, you will be more with people who tend to stay married and stay happily married. And then you will realize that to separate or to become some way is like you are rather odd. So and nobody likes to be odd. To be odd is one of the things people don't like. To be the odd one out, to be the strange one out, to be the different person. That's what we don't like. So stay with good people. Then when you are being bad, you'll be odd. So you'll come back and be good. So being religious is a very, very good thing. Being pious. And some of you, and being religious means you'll pray. You know, when you're going to write an exam, you pray, say, Lord, help me. When you go to Papaye or to uh, where do we go nowadays? Nando's. Or where? Max Mart. Do they eat there? Steers. Or don't mind your wife chop bar. Davy Sports. Wherever you go. Or Domedo Center. <laughs> when it's time to eat, you just say, Father, thank you in the name of Jesus for what you have provided us, O oh Lord. We receive it with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. And not. <laughs> blessed, blessed, amen. <laughs> what is blessed, blessed? What is that? What is wrong with you? I said, what is wrong with you? You are not religious. You are not pious. No one can see the piety. 
He said godliness is profitable. That means being pious and being religious is profitable. When you pray in that way, people will know that you are a Christian. And they will keep away certain things from you. When I was coming, when I got to the airport, there were a whole lot of people in the line seeing me off. I mean, it's not seeing me off, coming, going into the, the airport. And so we got to the place where you can't go. I mean, whoever is with you and... I was with uh, my pastor, Pastor Robert, and, and there were a whole long line of people. And we were at the end, I, I, I said, let us pray. All the white people were looking, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for blessing us, Lord. Thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for safety, Lord. As we go, we thank you for your mercies and your grace. I pray, Lord. Oh, I prayed in Jesus' name. They were looking at me. All the white people were looking. Because I'm a religious man. I said, I'm a religious man. I'm a pious man. I reverence God. I have beliefs in God. As I'm going in there, I believe that it's God who will take me and God who will bring me back. I believe it's God who will make us to meet again. God be with you till we meet again. When we hug one another, we should say, praise God. And not some funny... <laughs> it's a good life. Tell somebody it's a good life. It's a sweet life. I love living this kind of life. Do you love living this kind of life? A life where God is seen around. God is involved in whatever you are doing. God is a central part. People know when you get to your business office immediately that you are a God type of person related to God. Something God about you is there. It's a good thing. He said it's profitable. It's profitable. A brother, friend of mine, he went somewhere with his dark glasses and so on. And uh, when he got there, you know, people thought he was uh, one of the, you know, sometimes you can look not so religious. You know, when I wear, when I wear, when I wear, whenever I wear sunglasses, my wife tells me that I don't look so spiritual. <laughs> How many have realized that when you wear sunglasses, you don't look spiritual? You may not look spiritual, but you are spiritual. And, 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 and when people see you and get close to you, they must know. And this brother, he came around, you know, wearing his shades, going around, and this was just coming into sixth form. And he was a very spiritual person. He used to visit, go visitation with me. He used to pray with me. He used to, I used to discuss Bible with him. I used to learn Bible verses with him. Then when the guy said, hey, Charlie, how? hey. Charlie Coppers Orlando from Motown. Hey, Motown guys. Hey, Charlie, sit down. Hey, you like some job? He, he couldn't tell them that he was a religious person. He, he couldn't tell them. And would you believe it? Somebody who was praying with me, going on visitation with me, studying scriptures with me, so he knew so many verses. I mean, that was the moment and the day that he started backsliding. And that was it. Nobody knew he was a scripture union guru. Because he had gone to a new school. And the first people who met him thought he was spiritual. He should have told them, hey, Mekatolo Sambrama Ebosat al What did you say? Do you know Christ? Uh, sit down, sit down. Let's, let me talk with you. Let us pray, let us pray. And then you minister to them. You don't, you don't start and just... Pretend that you are not a really. Let everybody around you know. I don't want to have any such, what do you call it? I'm not, I don't do, not, I don't look down on you, and I'm not better than you because I don't, I just don't do that. By the grace of God, it's something I'm just not involved with, and I want you to know that I am a religious, spiritual, pious, godly, God type of person. This is me. That a man takes you in his car and gives you a lift and he, he puts his hand on your life. <laughs> Would you kindly remove your hand in the name of Jesus before? Never tell the person, please, 
Please, I will get down now. Never put your... I mean, with all due respect, Mr. Minister of uh, St Moon and Stars. I don't care if he's the Deputy Minister of Moon and Stars. Or he's the Minister of uh, 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 Lakes and Rivers. <laughs> he shouldn't do that. Or if you're a man driving and, and you pick a woman and she's also putting a hand... In your lap. You say, uh, will you please remove your hand right now? Don't enjoy such things that you are doing at all. Uh, if I get down. In fact, you shouldn't give such lips any, any, uh, anyway. Ask the person next to you, are you religious? Are you pious? Are you spiritual? A brother told me how he grew up. And one of the things that touched him, everywhere he went with his father, they, his father would pray in restaurants, Abroad in America, in Europe, his father would say, Nya was solia. Nya was solia. Let us pray. And then they would sing a hymn in Ghana. In the restaurant, everybody would be looking at them. Noon, Charlie. They would sing it. And then after that, they would say the grace. And they were always so ashamed and so shy. But his father would do it and do it and do it and do it. And tonight, and today, most of them are pastors. Most of them are spiritual because throughout their life, they were constantly conscientized and made to know that God is something that is part of us. When we go, when we come, when we sit down, you are going to school. Let us pray. 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 It's a powerful thing. It's good to be religious. Hallelujah. It's good to be spiritual. Hallelujah. It's good to be pious. Hallelujah. It's a good life. I said it's a good life. It's a sweet life. I love living this kind of life. Tell somebody it's a good life. Say, hey, it's a good life. It's a sweet life. I love it. I love living this kind of life. I want to live this kind of life. I just want to live this kind of life. I want to live a good life. Amen. They offer you alcohol. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm the religious kind. I'm the pious kind. Yes, you may call me a priest. I don't mind if you call me a priest. I don't mind if you call me a false prophet or a false priest. But I'm religious. I, I don't take alcohol. Do you need some condoms? No, I don't need condoms. I'm the religious type. I don't need to use condom for anything. I don't need condoms. You're traveling. Do you need some condoms for your journey? What would you on earth? What on earth would you be doing with some condoms? Tell somebody, hey, what are you doing with condoms? <laughs> hey! Young lady, and you have got a pill, the pill. You got a pill in your in your bag, and, and you are taking the pill. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Why? Why? What are you doing with it? Ask the nearest uh, person what is in your bag. Uh, is, are there only religious things in your bag? Are there religious things in your bag? It's good to be religious. When you play the cassette in your car, it should be a religious cassette that is played. I said it should be a religious cassette that's played. Hey, God wants you to have religious tapes, religious music, pious music. Music that is worshipping God. Not music that you can't know what they are saying. Well, uh, when I was young, I used to play those kind of songs. Uh, above all power, above all. But these days, you see, because of even the type of car that I'm using, it's a, it's a mus music, mu mostly Mozart. <laughs> Mostly Mozart or Beethoven or uh, these people, uh, Schumann, uh, Schumann and Schubert. The one you put on your car. Hey, 
Then you'll be waving your hand. Hey! Hey! Is that what has become of you? I want to be religious. I want to be spiritual. I want to be pious. I want to reverence God. I want to sing the religious songs in my car. I want to sing religious songs in my, in my house. I want to hear religious songs. I want to have religious radio stations. I don't want to have secular radio stations. I want to have spiritual things in my house. When you go home today, go into your wardrobe, into your house and say, I'm looking for everything that is not religious in this house. I'm looking for the clothes that are not religious. I want the blouses that are not religious. Give me the skirts that are not religious and throw them out of your house. I don't care if they send it to you from New York or from Massachusetts or wherever. Get rid of it. It's time to be pious. I said it's time to be pious. It's time to be pious. I want to be pious. I want to be religious. God will bless your life. It is profitable in this life. And it's profitable in the life to come. One day, you will reap what you have sown. By serving the Lord, the Lord will bless you. And by being religious, I said, so, so where are you going? Are you, are you going to a 31st party? Are you going to 31st party? I'm going to 31st church. So, are you going to the Good Friday jam? I'm not going to Good Friday jam. I'm going to Good Friday church service. What are you doing this Tuesday evening? Uh, can we go and watch a film? I'm not watching a film on Tuesday evening. I'm going to church on Tuesday evening. So, what are you doing to that? Are you watching Bold and Beautiful or uh, 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 what are the things they watch? Flashes, matches, bashes, passions. Are you staying at home for the World Cup? I'm watching the World Cup. Today is Sunday. I'm, I'm, watching, oh, no, I'm religious. I go to church on Sunday morning. I don't, I don't play. I don't play. I don't, I, don't, I don't watch soccer on Sunday morning. I'm going to eat on Mus- <laughs> I'm going to eat Omutu on Sunday. No, 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 no. I'm religious. Tell somebody, I'm religious. I want you to know I'm religious. Tell somebody by you, I'm religious. I, I want you to know. I want, excuse me. I want you to know I'm a religious person. I'm a spiritual person. Give the Lord a shout. Your shouts must be in the house of the Lord. Instead of just shouting, instead of just shouting when they score a goal. Your dances must be religious dances. I say your dances must be religious dances. Is there anybody here who has got a religious dance? Give the Lord a religious dance. Give the Lord a... My, my wife, my wife used to laugh at me, you know. She's, whenever she saw me dancing, you know. And I, I, one day I told her, listen, I have never been to a disco before. <laughs> I don't know what it's like. I don't know how to dance a well-lit dance. Any dance I dance is my own kind of dancing that I know. It's a religious dance. Give the Lord a shout. (laughs) (laughs) And you see people with... Various kinds of dances. Make sure your dance is a religious, spiritual dance. Look. How many want to be religious in the house? I say, how many want to be spiritual in the house? Stand to your feet and give the Lord a religious shout. Give the Lord a 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 shout. I want to be religious. I want to be spiritual. I want to be pious. I want to be reverent.
see a husband and wife, and when they go home tonight, and husband will say, Darling, darling, please come closer. Did you not hear what they said that we should be spiritual? Ah! Hey! 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 What is wrong with you? That is spirituality. That is spirituality. Tell every wife around you it's time to be religious at home. It's time to be religious in your bedroom. It's time to be religious. <laughs> Those of you who think you are guys, you don't want to marry. You just want to have different girls. Just move around and say, Han- uh, Ros- Ro- Ro- Rosanna, let's go. Ro- Rosanna, come. They- you think you are being wild. You can be spiritual and religious, powerful, and you will call your beloved and say, Swete, Yanko, It's religious to have a beloved. It's religious to settle down. Oh, non-religious people don't settle. They just keep jumping like butterflies from here to here to here to here. You can't make up your mind. Make up your mind. Decide to settle. Make up your mind. That's what it means to be religious. God wants to bless you. Lift your hand and thank him that you have a chance to be religious, to be spiritual. Godliness is profitable. Being pious is profitable. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Godliness is profitable, Lord. Godliness is profitable. Oh, hallelujah. We bless your name. Jesus, we worship and we praise your name. We lift our voices. Jesus, we worship and we praise your name. Our voices say, Oh, you are worthy, Lord, you are worthy. Jesus, we worship and we praise your name. Come on, sing it one more time. Jesus, we worship. Jesus, we worship and we praise your name. We lift our your hands to the Lord and just thank him that you are a spiritual and a, a person that it's of God, a godly person, a religious person. When somebody offers you something to lie about and to steal and to write the wrong things and to say the wrong things, just tell them from today. That's a lot for strength to be a religious kind of person, a person who prays, a person who goes to church, a person whose social life is in church, whose friends are in church, who knows the Lord, who serves the Lord, whose parties are done in a Christian way, whose music is a religious kind of music, whose friends and partners are religious and spiritual people. Mado Sakambro Semila Balandola Mashande. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We thank you in Jesus' name. As every head is bowed, every eye closed. Pastor, somebody invited me to your church today, but I want to give my life to Jesus. Can you please pray with me? I want to be born again. I want to be saved. I don't know Jesus. You know, as I was coming here, I I realized that I'm, I'm not really a religious person. I'm, I realize I don't, I don't really know you, Lord. I don't really know the Lord. Pray with me. If you are here like that and you want me to pray with you, lift up your right hand and I'm going to pray with you. Just your right hand. God bless you. Lift it up high. Thank you. I see your hand. I see your hand. Lift it up high. Pastor, I want to be born again. In fact, I don't understand what it means to be born again, but I want it. I want to know Jesus. Lift up your right hand. 
God bless you. If you've lifted up your right hand, come to me in the front here. Just come from where you are standing. I surrender all. I surrender all. I Jesus this morning, come to Jesus. All right. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Close your eyes. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. For my sins. Today, I humble myself before your throne please come into my heart save my soul save my soul please write my name please write my name in the book of life in the book of life today today i humble myself i humble myself i repent i repent i repent i repent and i receive jesus and i receive jesus jesus christ jesus christ as my savior as my savior and my master and my master thank you lord Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Saving my soul. Please write my name. Please write my name in the book of life. In the book of life. From today. From today. I will follow you. I will serve you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah.